Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen. And in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello, this is Pastor Sam, and thank you for joining me on the program today. I am so glad you're there. I know God has something special in store for you today. Do you know how to walk on water? Well, in the Bible, there was a man by the name of Peter who walked on the water. And I'll give you a clue. He really didn't walk on the water. He walked on the Word of the Lord. Now, I don't know what your raging sea represents today. Sometimes it may be your debt. Sometimes it may be problems at home. Sometimes it may be, you know, your marriage is falling apart. Uh, maybe your world is coming apart at the seams. And it seems impossible, but God is a God who specializes in the impossible. And you can walk on water today. I want you to have this message. I'm going to send it to you free and postpaid, but you have to call me or write to me. And here's all you have to do. Call 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. And say, I want that message on how to walk on water. You can write to me, Sam Luke, at 11700 Genito Road, Midlothian, Virginia, 23112. Or you can go to our website at victorytab.org and reach me that way. But I really want to hear from you. And when you make contact with me, just request the message, How to Walk on Water. Well, let's go together into that service that's already in progress. And the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost are falling right now. There's a promise of, of healing. Come on unto me, you who are heavy laden. That means afflicted. So you can come to the Lord. Then, let, let me tell you something else. Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly or innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But Jesus has been glorified. The Holy Ghost has been given. And Jesus is saying, come to me and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen to Revelation 22, 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Just walk on the word. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. C-O-M-E. Come to Jesus today. Somebody say amen. amen. So receive the word of God. Number two. Number two. Believe the word of God. Romans 10 says faith comes by hearing the word of God. So when you hear it, believe it. Hebrews 11, 6, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So when you come, come in faith. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God the resurrection from the dead thou shalt be saved. With a heart man believeth unto righteousness with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Faith is not complicated. It is simply taking God at His word. It is accepting the fact that God told you the truth. How many saved folk we got in the place? Huh? Are you, you know you're saved? I had a man, believe it or not, tell me not long ago, said, you can't know you're saved till you get to heaven. I said, really? I said, you wouldn't know you're lost till you got to hell then. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you know you're saved, give God some crazy praise in the house. Hey, I'm saved and I know I am. John 10, 28, Jesus said, I give unto you eternal life and you shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck you out of my hand. I'm saved. I'm secure in Christ. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things are new. He was tempted in all points like as we yet without sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God through faith in Christ. I've been washed in the blood. I've been redeemed. I've been set free. Hallelujah. I'm saved. Glory. I'm saved. 
Somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord, will you? So it, it's all about the Word. You, you, you receive the Word. You believe the Word. And now here's, here's the last part. I'm, I'm closing pretty soon. I said pretty soon. I didn't say now. I said pretty soon. And here's the last one, though, and that's obey the Word. Now, James says that, that faith without works is dead. Now, he's not talking about uh, the kind of faith that, that, that I mentioned earlier, saving faith, faith in the Word of God. What he's talking about here is corresponding faith actions corresponding actions you know why I tithe because I believe what the Bible says about tithing bring the tithe into the storehouse and God says watch me see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive because it's not enough for me to say I believe that now I have to obey what the word of the Lord says and bring my life into alignment with it in order to get blessed. I have to do something. I have to, I have to demonstrate some action. I have to put some action in so that I can receive the blessing, so I have to pay my tithe. Are you still with me? Say amen. And it, it works the same way. Everything else God has promised, you have to not only receive it, you have to believe it. You have to obey it. The Bible says he gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. I have people all the time say, I want to know more about the book of Revelation. I want to know more about Daniel. I want to know more about prophecy. I want to know about signs of the time, some of these things that are, that are coming up. And pretty soon I'm going to give a prophecy update here on a Sunday morning, talk to you about some of these signs. And we have one of the foremost prophecy teachers in, in Brother Schmidt. And I like to consult with him and, and talk to him and, and, and about some of the things that are happening on the world scene. And we're living very close to the coming of the Lord. But listen, what you need first is not to know about the uh, seven seals of the book of Revelation. You don't need to know first about Daniel and the, uh, the uh, Nebuchadnezzar the, and then the... the, 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 the uh, statue that he uh, that he saw of the uh, of all the different kingdoms and and get into depth and all that. What you need to know first is that when God says something to you in this book, you can not only receive it and believe it, but you can actually act on it and obey it and have it. Amen. See, it all goes back to the word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. For as the rain cometh down the snow from heaven, and turneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Psalm 20 12 says, The words of the Lord are pure words of silver, tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Romans 1 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. So I want to act on this word. I want to act on it. I was preaching a revival in a town down in Mississippi years ago. And you ever been in a, de a dead church? Some of you may be watching me that you're in a dead church. We may be a lot of things, but we ain't dead around here. Amen? That's somebody say, I'm not dead. Are you dead? If somebody looks like they're dead, slap them just to make sure. <laughs> Pow! I thought you were dead. I'm sorry. I'm not dead. Not a dead church, but I was in one. It was so dead, if the Lord had come, the, they would have been the first to go because the Bible says a dead in Christ shall rise first. <laughs> and the preacher was dead. That's awful, isn't it? Have a dead preacher stinking up the place like that. They had pews there. You know why they call them pews? All them dead people sitting in them. Pew! <laughs> Pew! You try to preach in there, man, it was like just running into a brick wall. You couldn't get anybody to say amen or oh me or anything. I like, I, I listen to, uh, see what Pastor Eric's going to say. 
Well, and I know he starts with the well stuff. I'm doing good. Well, come on, preach, preacher, he says. Shake that bush again or something like that, you know. But there's nothing, nothing. I would say if you believe that, raise your hand. And I thought I saw some people sitting on their hand just to keep it from flying up. And you know nothing is deader than a dead Pentecostal church. Twice dead plucked up by the roots. And, and so as a young evangelist, I thought, I can break this. I'm going to fast. I fasted. And I'd go back. I'd say, it's going to be a breakthrough tonight. It was worse. I thought, I better quit fasting. This is getting worse. I didn't know they were having problems, but they were hating one another. Any time you start, listen, you get to the place where you hate somebody in the body of Christ, you need to pile up in this altar because you're backslid. I don't care what you they did or you think they did. If you're hating somebody, that's, that makes as much sense as you drinking poison and thinking your enemy's going to die. Because when the root of bitterness takes hold, you will die. And they were just mad at everybody, just mad. I thought, Lord, what am I going to do? I went back and prayed some more, fasted some more. It got worse. About three nights I thought, you know what? Maybe one of my relatives will die and I'll have to leave. That's bad when you start praying for your relatives to die so you can go to their funeral. Because I was scheduled for two weeks in that place. And I thought, I can't take this. I can't deal with this. This is awful. One night I said, I've preached on hell. I preached on hell. The only time I ever preached on hell like I was glad they were going. I was enjoying it just a little too much that night. And I got to the end of the sermon. I said, if you don't want to go to hell, you better get out here right now. Not one person moved. But there was a man that they had brought in a wheelchair. And he called, called the lady that had, that had taken, brought him over there and said, and he told her to push him down to the altar because he, he wanted to get saved. Well, this is how backslidden they were. She pushed him to the altar and left him. <laughs> One man in a wheelchair. I went down there and I said, what do you want? <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> he said, you told me if I didn't want to go to hell, come down here. I don't want to go to hell. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> I said, <laughs> all right. Let's pray. Your Heavenly Father, your Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, have mercy on me. And I'm praying the sinner's prayer. Tears started running down his face. I said, I don't usually ask people how they feel because it's not really about feeling, it's about faith. But I'm convinced if you get the right kind of faith, you'll get the right kind of feeling. I said, how, how do you feel? He said, I feel like I had a bath on the inside. I said, that's great. Praise God. Praise God. He said, let me tell you something. He said, years ago, he said, I used to go to church. But he said, I was drunk one night out of my mind and had a wreck and ended up paralyzed from my waist down. And for 19 years now, I've been blaming God for all this when it was my fault. He just wanted to save me, forgive me. And I accept that. And I ask him to have mercy on me for, for hating on him for 19 years for something I did. I said, that's wonderful. I'm going to go up there and tell everybody. And I got the microphone. I'm going to the microphone like an evangelist. You know. I said, I'm going to tell you all something. That's God. And I, I was going to tell them about him getting saved. But I heard myself say, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been there or not, but I heard myself say, this man is going to walk tonight. <laughs> You know what they did? Nothing. <laughs> and the man said, Psst. I went back down there. He said, I can't walk. <laughs> I said, I know. I heard you. He said, I'm paralyzed. I can't walk. I said, now listen. The same, I don't know why I said that, except I know it was God, because it wasn't my idea. But the same God that saved you wants to heal you and you can walk in Jesus name he said well let's get it on then <laughs> now I don't know what to do 
And I, I thought about Acts 3, uh, where it says that Peter and John came up on that man as crippled. And it said Peter took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And his ankle bones received strength. And he went with him into the temple, walking, leaping, praising God. I said, that's what I'll do. I said, give me your right hand. I grabbed him by the right hand. I said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And I jerked him out of that wheelchair. You say, what if he'd fallen down? I couldn't heal a house fly if he had a headache. That wasn't up to me. I'm just going to get him out of the chair. The Lord's going to do the rest of it. I got him out. I jerked him right up out of that wheelchair. <laughs> Big as you please. I said, all right, Lord, it's up to you now. And when he came out of that wheelchair, God gave him a brand new set of legs. He took off running. He runs around the first time. I'm thinking, now see, well, that's one of the problems with preachers anyway. They don't ever know when to hush. And I wanted him to say something. He came around, and I thought, I'll stop him. He put a move on me. I was going to stop him. He kept running. He ran around the second time. Third time around, I grabbed him. I clotheslined him. I said, hey, testify. He said, what's that mean? I said, Tell everybody what the Lord's done. He said, Preacher, if they can't see, they need a miracle too. <laughs> he took off running. I got right behind him running. We all ran that night. Revival broke out. See, sometimes you got to do more than just say, I believe. Sometimes you got to do more than just say, I embrace the Word of God. I accept the Word of God. Sometimes you got to put the Word of God to the test and step out on faith and add to your faith corresponding actions. Just like the man when Jesus, the crippled man, had the withered hand. And what did Jesus say? Stretch forth your hand. What if he said, I can't do that? He didn't ask him if he could do it. He said, do what you can't do in Jesus' name. Just stretch your hand. And his, he was made whole. Sometimes that's where you are. And maybe that's where you are right now. And it's time for you to put your faith into action. Would you just bow your head right now for a moment? I want to pray. And I want to pray first for you who are watching me. I want you to believe God with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now for those people that are watching. And, and they're watching live stream and they're watching television and they're watching or listening on the radio. And they need a miracle and you are a miracle working God and by faith we're going to walk on the waves today the very thing that terrifies us and terrorizes us and the thing God that strikes fear in our hearts we're going to walk on it in Jesus name just like Simon Peter did and we want to see you we want to focus our attention on you Lord because when he when when Simon Peter got his attention on the waves instead of on on Jesus he began to sink, sink but, he, but he walked on water. So the, the, the idea is that we've got to stay focused on you and on your word. And that's what we're doing right now. So wherever people are in need, wherever people are in trouble, as they exercise their faith, as they believe the word, as they receive the word, and as they act on the word, God, give them the ability to walk on the waves. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, God is such a good God. He loves us so much, it's His blessed will to shower His richest blessings down upon us. And I believe the Lord's blessed you today. I would really like to hear from you. Will you please call me? All you have to do is call 804-744-8881. That's area code 804-744-8881. Tell me about what the Lord has done in your life. And when you do, I want to send to you the message that you just heard in its entirety, How to Walk on Water. And you can even write to me, Sam Luke at Victory Tabernacle, 11700 Genito Road, Midlothian, Virginia, 23112. Or contact us on the World Wide Web, victorytab.org. Very simple. And then when you make contact with me, request the message, How to Walk on Water. And I want to send it to you. I believe that once you come to know Christ as your personal Savior, the most important thing in your life 
is to find the right church. And by the right church, I mean a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled church. And that's the kind of church Victory Tabernacle is. So would you join us Sunday, 10 o'clock, two full hours of praise and worship, ministry from the Word of God, and always a time together in His presence around the altar. Then the last Sunday of every month is our Miracle Sunday, which means we have an additional service at 6 o'clock in the chapel, and God is confirming His Word with mighty signs and wonders and miracles. On Wednesday evening, why not join us for our Family Enrichment Night service? It's fun, it's relevant, it's exciting. It's a time of intensive teaching and training. It's a time when you can come together with other believers and enjoy fellowship in the Word of God. You know, we have something special for every age group and every member of the family because we have Royal Rangers for our boys and missionettes for the girls and a dynamic youth program called Victory Battle Cry for our teens. We also have a ministry to college and career age young people called The Vine, and I'm teaching in the main sanctuary, so don't miss it. Seven o'clock on Wednesday night at 8.30, we're walking out the door. By the way, why not check out our 24-hour radio network. It's called Victory Battle Cry, and you can just go to our website, victorytab.org and click on Victory Battle Cry. You can even get it on your smartphone and I've listened to it in Israel and foreign countries. Just click on and, and there we are. And you've got uh, the opportunity to hear uh, the word taught and preached and also there's inspirational music testimonies. It'll be a blessing to you so be sure to check it out. Thanks again for joining me today. May the Lord bless you and until we're together again just like this around the Word of God. Remember, the Bible says faith comes by hearing the Word of God. And here at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen. Come on, somebody, would you say, over my situation, you reign. Over my situation, you have control. Whatever you're going through, Whatever's coming against you, let him be the one who reigns over everything. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you today. I'm so glad to be a house of the Lord. my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. My God reign. Oh, Lord, you reign above.
you ready?